Now we're going to talk about the distribution of energy between macroscopic systems in, that are in thermal interaction. <clears throat> so we're considering again systems A and A prime that are in thermal interaction and uh, the total system A star A plus A prime is isolated from the rest of the world. So it's the same story. Now first of all in thermal interaction I want to remind you that we have the following uh, condition uh, where we allow heat exchange and uh, this is going to result in uh, a change in the probabilities of occupancy of energy levels so we have a fixed external parameters uh, there is no work done uh, on the system or by the system so this is saying the work is zero and we have energy levels fixed so we also have fixed energy levels so what does change is the probability of occupancy of the uh, energy levels now again I'm considering two systems so let's say that we start with uh, the same story we consider two macroscopic systems uh, these systems are called A and A prime and these systems have associated with them uh, A and A prime uh, with associated energies E and E prime respectively all right so this is the corresponding energy now I call Omega as a function of energy E uh, is the number of states accessible states the number of uh, states accessible to system A and uh, these states will correspond to a total energy for system A with energy in the range E to E plus delta E and I have a similar definition for omega prime as a function of E prime it's the number of states accessible to system A prime with energy in the range E prime to E prime plus delta E uh, so what is the meaning of this delta E so uh, this basically uh, delta E is a small uh, change in the energy it corresponds to uh, basically a small variation in the uh, states so we can basically lump them together and we can say that if the energy is in this range e to e plus delta e we can basically say the simple uh, simply say the system has an energy e and the same is going to be true for a prime so we're assuming in this discussion uh, that this delta e is small enough so that energy can be considered a discrete in units of delta E and it's much larger than uh, the actual energy levels discrete energy levels uh, separation between consecutive energy levels uh, so that energy is actually a continuous variable but we can consider it to be discrete in units of delta E because the variation in the number of accessible states is negligible in this range so we can use one number for number of accessible states for energy in the range E to E plus delta E so we're basically saying that all states of system A uh, with energies with the total energy e to e plus delta e can be lumped together so
so that the variation in energy is negligible as if they simply had an energy E. Okay, so the variation in the number of accessible states is negligible in this range. And the same is true for A prime. Okay, and we have the total system A plus A prime. We call it A star. This total system is isolated, therefore it has a fixed total energy, E plus E prime, which is E star, is a constant. But since we have thermal interaction between A and A prime, A and A prime can exchange uh, energy in the form of heat. All right. Now, what I would like to ask is, what is the probability E? Probability as a function of E, the probability of system A having an energy in the range E to E plus delta E. System A having an energy E to E plus delta E, where delta is sufficiently small so that the variation in number of accessible states is negligible. And the, I can also say there's a corresponding question, what is the probability of A prime having an energy, because the total energy is fixed, uh, E star minus E which is equal to E prime to E prime plus delta E. So what is this probability? Well, this probability is equal to the number of states accessible to the system when this system A, the total system, when the system A has energy E to E plus delta E. So the number of states accessible to the star system when the system A has energy in the range E to E plus delta E, divided by the total number of accessible states to the system star, the total system. So, which is something uh, I can call it to be a constant 1 over omega star. So, it's a constant C times the number of accessible states to the total system when the uh, system A has energy E to E plus delta E. So I have omega star total here. This is total number of accessible states to system A star and omega star as a function of energy E, is the number of states accessible to A star when the subsystem A, when the system A has an energy in the range E to E plus delta E, where the number of accessible states is not changing in this range. Okay, now we have uh, our postulate of equal a priori probabilities. So uh, if I consider due to uh, equal a priori probability postulate, if you think about any accessible uh, state of um, A, what is the probability of having this uh, accessible state of A? It's 1 over the number of uh, accessible states to system A. So this is true for any accessible system uh, uh, 
in accessible state of system A. So due to equal uh, uh, a priori probabilities postulate, when we have A has energy E, it can be in any one of its accessible states omega e is the number of accessible states uh, with equal probability so this is true and the corresponding system a prime and a prime can be with equal probability in any one of its accessible states uh, omega prime with energy e star minus e accessible states with equal probability now what does that tell me about the total number of accessible states the total number of accessible states to system a star with a uh, a having an energy e to e plus delta e is the number of states accessible to system A and multiplied by the number of accessible states to system A prime. So basically I have the combinations uh, of these uh, giving me uh, the total number of accessible states uh, to system A. And so this is going to imply uh, for the probability of A having an energy in the range E to E plus delta E, it's the number of states, basically I'm going to use uh, this equation here, um, number of states accessible to system A when it has this energy uh, E to E plus delta E, and multiplied by the number of states accessible to E prime, A prime, when the energy is E star minus E or E prime. So this gives me the number of states accessible to system A star when A has energy E, divided by the total number of accessible states to system A star. So 1 over omega star total I call C. So this is uh, a constant times the number of states accessible to system A when it has energy E to E plus delta E multiplied by the number of states accessible to system A prime when it has an energy E star minus E uh, to E star minus E plus delta E. So I have found that this probability, the probability that A can have an energy in this range e to e plus delta e will be given by a constant times its number of accessible states multiplied by the number of accessible states uh, for the corresponding energy of system a prime okay so we're going to continue this discussion in the second video uh, before we continue i would like to clarify the situation we have here once again we're talking about thermal interaction between systems a and a prime and thermal interaction implies there is no work done and uh, external parameters are fixed energy levels are fixed it's the probability of occupancy of the energy levels that is changing now we if you consider the energies of these systems a and a prime if a has an energy e a prime has a corresponding energy e prime e plus e prime equals to e star the, for the total system a star is isolated it's a constant i call the number of accessible states to system a with energies in the range e to e plus delta e omega e and this delta e is chosen such that uh, it's a small variation in energy that does not affect the number of accessible states appreciably. And the number of states accessible to system A prime with energy E prime to E prime plus delta E is omega prime as a function of E prime. So once again, this delta E is chosen 
small enough that the number of accessible states is not changing much so we can neglect it we can consider energy to be discrete in units of delta e in, in the number of accessible states calculation and the same is true for a prime and these two systems that are in thermal interaction can exchange energy in the form of heat while the total energy is fixed e star is a constant and uh, I asked myself, what is the probability of system A having an energy in the range E to E plus delta E? Or equivalent question, what is the probability of system A prime having an energy E star minus E, which is E prime, to E prime plus delta E? The answer is the number of states accessible to the total system A star when A has an energy E to E plus delta E divided by total number of states accessible to A star. And this is due to the equal a priori probability postulate. So when a system A has uh, omega of E accessible states, each accessible state has equal probability equal to 1 over omega E. So uh, for the total number of accessible states uh, to system A star, when system A has an energy E, we just have to multiply the number of accessible states to system A with the corresponding number of accessible states to A prime to get the total number of accessible states when system A has an energy E. So omega star E is omega E times omega prime E star minus E, so that the probability uh, of A having an energy E to E plus delta E is omega times omega prime divided by omega star total for energy E and E star minus E. So this is going to give me a constant C. So this is basically what I'm identifying as a constant. And what is this C? So what I'm calling C is 1 over omega star total, total number of accessible states to system A star. And so this probability will be given by the product of the number of accessible states omega e and omega prime e star minus e multiplied by this constant c.